people of Earth. We have come to upgrade your cosmic consciousness. DNA activation ready in three, two, one. Hi, welcome to Q&A on Breakthrough Leadership. I'm Craig Anderson. And I'm Lou Quinto. On today's episode of Q&A on Breakthrough Leadership, we're going to turn the tables a little bit from a prior conversation we had about employer attitudes and start to look at the U.S. worker perspectives on remote work. Uh, Gallup, an organization I'm sure many people are familiar with, has been polling workers throughout this time frame and really overall on uh, their thoughts and opinions on remote work. And they finished an analysis at the end of May, Lou, that found seven in 10 employees are still working remotely. Uh, and only about 25% of them want to return to the workplace, shockingly enough. Um, and half people would rather work from home, you know, COVID aside. And the, you had COVID concerns for people wanting to work from home. And that number approaches 75%. Yeah. So, you know, we, we thought today it'd be great to look to see, you know, what does this mean for employee attitudes as we start asking them to come back to work potentially? Uh, so we're going to talk about three areas today. One, how many workers are reporting they work from home and how has that changed over time? Two, what does this mean for employee engagement? How is this going to change how employees feel about the workplace? And then third, when businesses do reopen, are workers going to be willing to return? Uh, so Lou, why don't we kind of jump right into our first discussion topic here around the scope of remote work? What have we found through Gallup? We're finding that uh, workers are liking working from home. And it, yeah, on the majority, uh, it, initially there may have been some pushback. I don't feel comfortable, but you know, with technology, they, we've we've really adapted quite well. The workforce has really proved, that, you know, that they've been very agile to be able to adapt to a situation, thrown into a situation. And it wasn't just go work from home remotely. It was work from home remotely, don't go to the stores, don't go out on the streets, take care of your kids. <laughs> and so it was, you talk about getting thrown into the fire instead of the fire pan uh, or the frying pan. It was, it, they've proved to be very agile. A lot of people are settling into, you know what? I could do this long term. And yeah. I'm talking to a lot of my friends who never worked from remote before and sort of looked at me who's really worked remotely or worked from my home uh, for almost 20 years. And they've looked at me and said, I understand why you can do what you do. And it's difficult at first. You develop, they've developed the discipline. They've set their hours. They've come up with their workspace in the house and everything. And now they've, they've hit their groove. They're liking the groove because they don't have to, if there was a commute involved that they had to drive into the city, that commute time is gone. And they you know, having to dress up to go to work, except for maybe putting on a shirt and a tie, but you got sweats on underneath. I'm not going to stand up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think a lot. I, I think a lot of people have found I like this, and it can work. Even even people my age that never worked remotely are saying, "Wow, this is good." Yeah, I think we're going to see. You know, the the challenge I think of this remote work has been, especially if they had kids or something like that, is you had this kind of like suddenly I had to go as you said from zero to sixty working from home. And you had a lot of these distractions. And so it made it a little hard to kind of focus on it. But longer term is those kind of issues, you know, kind of either get used to or we get back to sending kids back to school. People are going to kind of reflect on it and say, you know, I can get a lot done here. And, you know, I can do some of it on my own terms with the right employer mindset. They can really find that, hey, if it's you're getting the work done, I'm not going to get too dirty you know, two down on specific hours. We're going to see people become even more embracing of it over time. The one part we've seen in some other discussions we've had is people kind of miss that collegiality of work and they miss kind of seeing Bob for coffee in the morning or over at the water cooler. But I, I see <laughs> some minute. of that change. Some people may be glad they're not seeing Bob at the water cooler at the coffee pot in the morning. So don't jump to conclusions. <laughs> yeah, that could be the case. One of the challenges has been it wasn't only work from home. As you said, it was don't leave your home. So right. now as people actually get out and they can go to dinner with friends and they can start going back to events, you know, obviously, you know, limited bits as this grows back. But I wonder, you know, if people start getting that social impact outside of the working from home, 
does even that issue go away? It'll, start it'll, compens it. it'll compensate for what they've missed back at the office. And, and again, going back to this whole thing, and you made the mention of being thrust into this, you know, all at one time. I truly, we don't, we're human beings. We don't like change. In essence, when it comes to just looking at, you know, the business model of remote work, it's good that we were all forced at the same time to make that change. There's not that motivation. There's not that fire, that sizzle that, okay, I've got to do it now. Forced people to change was really made that thing just flip over real fast that, okay, yeah. I'm going to do this. So it helped with that mental, that mindset of I've got to make this work as opposed to I'm trying it out. Right. I, so we'll see how that kind of grows, but it does lead to some questions still about employee engagement. You know, it's such a complicated, complicated relationship between employee engagement and remote work. Uh, what, you know, some studies have found Amplified had done some research that saw, saw, you know, workers that had the option to work remotely had the highest engagement, but they had that option. Right. Um, when they had no remote option, there was lower engagement. But interestingly, what they pointed out were there's really three things that people needed to feel good and engaged in a remote work situation. One was goal support, right? To understand, you know, exactly what my goals are, to find success and resources. Autonomy, clear direction on goals and the, you know, without a pathway, you will do it this way, this way, this way. Sure. And then role clarity, you know, limiting work purview and connecting daily on tasks, which are all things I think you and I have been advocating for just from a leadership perspective in general. So, so what do you think, Lou? How can leaders start to build employee engagement in this new world? Well, you know, first of all, going back to, to something you said is, you, you know, this, our business model has always been the carrot and the stick uh, type of arrangement where you provide someone an incentive or a bonus, a year end, you know, increase if they perform at a certain level. And I think studies have shown that the extrinsic you know, rewards don't work as well as the in intrinsic rewards. And those intrinsic rewards is my self-motivation, me getting the job done, me being able to focus on a goal, finding that I'm, I'm going to get to the engagement part here. Now I'll make the transition. <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to find that people, because this is more intrinsic versus extrinsic, they're going to make the effort to really create the engagement online, you know, through Zoom calls and things like that, uh, using Slack and, and really using technology that they didn't use as much in the office. They're really going to explore and see a lot of the functionality and the benefits of, of a lot of those platforms that help with teams and, and engagement. And, and there, we're, we're going through that right now. We've got new toys, we're playing with them, we're learning with them. But again, it goes back to that, that the engagement not only has to come from the leader, but the engagement has to come also from the person themselves. Do I want to be engaged or do I want to feel like I'm out on an island and I'm just going to do my work and I don't care about everybody else? People are going to find that in order to do just their work, they're going to have to get other people input. They're going to need to get resources from other people. They're going to get need to get work projects that they need to finish up from other people. They're going to, just like we've been forced into remote work, they're going to be forced into finding ways to maintain high engagement, not being in the office. Yep. Yeah, no, I think you're exactly right. It's It falls on both sides of this equation for people to be engaged, right? This is, you know, regardless who you're working from home or working in an office, you are spending a lot of your lifetime working in the office. So finding a way to feel engaged and to kind of understand what it is this means to me and how this, how I'm engaging in the workforce is going to be important. So, so I think it's kind of an interesting symbiotic relationship we're going to see going forward, right? Leaders are going to have to kind of provide that access. And with that right. kind of freedom comes some responsibility from the man, from the employees to say, all right, I'm going to step up and get things done. The last thing is, you know, you know, we've heard a lot about, and I always enjoy these big news reports, you know, Twitter and Facebook are going to move to 100% remote work. Well, there's a shock, right? Of, you know, we know it's going to start there. Right. Um, but that's not really a representative sample. You know, when you think about it, most companies are small businesses, right? They're, you know, under 100 employees. Yep. And so this means a very different thing because they don't necessarily have the same resources to just blow everything out and do work from home right out of the gate. If they want, if some employers are kind of going back to this transition and they may want to have some people back in the office, you know, what do workers think about it? And what we've seen from Gallup is 
26% said if we're up to them, they'd return to work. So it's really, you know, I think we've seen this over and over is it's only about a quarter of people are really chomping at the bit to go back to working in an office. Um, 25% would stay home due to COVID concerns. So presumably they're willing to go back into the office if COVID is yeah. no longer an issue. And then the, the rest, the other half said, man, I'd really prefer to work from home. So yeah. how do you as an employer who says, you know, I'm good with this work from home, but I'm not great with work from home. I'd love to kind of maybe get to some interim step. How, how do you think employers should start to look at this when they're you know, smaller and don't have those big resources? Well, again, looking at it from the employee perspective, you know, this time, they want to be able to work in an environment that they work best in. And as, the, as Gallup pointed out, 50% of people said, I could do this the rest of my life working from home. And you're always going to have that 25% to a third who know I like the old way we do things and I want to go back. And, and, and they just feel that's their comfort zone. There's no right or wrong to that, but that tends to be their comfort zone. You're going to find those 75% of the entire population, they're open to this workforce. Employers, small businesses, you, you mentioned, you know, a hundred. I'm even thinking of employers who only have like six or seven employees. Okay. Yeah. What is it going to do? You know, what is it going to do to them? Uh, is that something that remote work is they can continue to do? And that goes back to another conversation we had in the previous video is that companies are going to have to look at positions and there are going to be some positions that can't be done from home period, end of story, a financial position where they, they've got very sensitive material and documents and cybersecurity becomes a major issue. And to really spread a company's tentacles of cybersecurity into individual homes of workers, it, I, I don't think that's cost effective. So I do think you'll find that there will be some jobs that are required to, at, to be at an office. But at the same time, I think you're going to find that some offices may reduce their footprint and you may have some open offices, some conference rooms and things like that, that people can come and go. And so they can be sometime in the office and sometimes, you know, work primarily working remote. You're going to find that there's going to be over time, there's going to be a balance and you're going to, offices will not be eliminated. So if you own an office building or in the, in the real estate off, you know, the commercial industry, don't, uh, don't worry about your office space. Some companies will reduce their footprint. There's no question about that. Yeah. I've, I've you know, I've thought a lot of it. There's so many different things as I start thinking about this change is, you know, one before COVID, everyone was kind of saying, Oh, you know, this whole open office space thing is a disaster. And this whole non-assigned desk things is a disaster. Now it's like all of a sudden, and actually, those things probably were a disaster when you had all the workforce still coming to the office. You could sit wherever you wanted every day. So that right. kind of changes things up, right? So maybe that open office concept is still there with kind of the flexible seating. Um, but you might just want to bring Clorox wipes with you when you come into the office every week, right? I, I, but you're also going to find that a lot of companies are going to be taking those protections and those precautions by, you know, putting up taller cubicles. Uh, you know, if they had small cubicles that you could just literally stand up one of those, uh, you know, prairie dogs and looking around for somebody because of the social distancing that you're going to see the return of the higher cubicle wall. Companies will make significant changes within their office because going forward, we want to be able to prepare ourselves if there's going to be another pandemic. Lessons learned. Yeah, it's, I, there's so many interesting things. And I think, you know, right now, I think we're seeing that big swing of the pendulum. Oh, yeah, let's all work from home. And we'll see how yeah. long it stays way over here, right? Everything kind of wants to have a tendency to get back to the middle. So I think we'll get some sense of that over the next few years. But, you know, as we keep looking, you know, with this kind of COVID could come back in the fall, it could be here next year. We don't, worry, we don't know how long this is going to last. So, right. it, you know, I think people have to start making the decisions. But to your point on some jobs having to be in the office, you know, what really, I kind of was always of the opinion, and you can let a lot of things work from home, but you start getting into a call center, that's impossible. And then I look at my clients with huge call centers who have PII data in front of them, and they've got them working from home. So right. at this point, I'm not sure anything's impossible on the work from home front. We could see a lot. I think a lot of those kind of paradigms haven't shifted. They've just been broken. Right. Yeah. So I, it'll be interesting to watch. So yeah. 
you're yeah. going to you're going to find employees that need specialized equipment. Uh, you know, so, like e, e, here in Indianapolis, Eli Lilly, it, the laboratories, you can't recreate that at home. Okay. Uh, architects who have these big CAD printing machines and things like that, they will be spending some time in the office because they have to use that machinery. You'll find that's, that where specialized equipment is involved and you can't buy one for everybody to put into their house. It's easy for a company to buy a laptop and a printer to somebody and say, okay, you're ready to go as opposed to someone who works in a situation where their equipment is specialized. They won't work from remote. Excellent. So, All right. Well, what are your key takeaways, Lou? Key takeaways. You mentioned the pendulum has swung. And as we all know in physics, the pendulum will come, will come down towards center. What we need to do as it comes down towards center is employees really need to look at themselves first. It, did this work for me? Am I productive? Am I meeting my needs intrinsically as opposed to just the extrinsic value of the annual report, annual review when I go in and my boss tells me I hit my goals, but that's great. But is it doing anything for me? And is the engagement there, is the working with other people and the collaboration there that really makes me happy? If it's not then that's going to be some of the people that filter back to an office. But I, I, yeah, we'll get back. We'll get back to a situation where we've tried out an experiment. It's worked in many instances. Now what we need to do is figure out what worked, what went well, what didn't go well. And those things that went well, keep those things that didn't go well, we need to toss to the side. Yeah, so. I agree. I think, you know, my takeaway is really, this is going to be, this is going to be something to watch over time. It's hard. I think we're all, as you said in another video, we're all still so close to it. And yeah. everything seemed, you know, we, we haven't had that opportunity to kind of take a breath and look back. See that maybe over the next, you know, six or eight months, hopefully, as things kind of, you know, other priorities kind of move away. And leaders will start looking and employees will start looking and say, all right, what's the best way to make of this? You know, I could even see situations where some employees may say, well, I don't really want to work from home. I don't want to go to the big corporate office. Maybe I'll rent some small office space just to get that distinction in my life. There's a lot to come on this, but it's definitely something that I think we need to keep watching every week or every few months and check in on this topic. Yeah, it's almost like Deming's process improvement. You know, uh, where you, you, you plan, do, check, and act. It's going to be a situation where in process improvement, we need to constantly keep gathering this data, asking what's going well, what's not going well, what did we learn, you know, what problems did we incur, how might we be able to do that, so that this way, every time you do those check-ins, as you said, monthly check-ins or, you know, every other month check-in and say, okay, where are we, that you have the data, you just don't have people's memories to say, this is what we should do. You actually go back to process improvement, is gather data and keep that data so that this way you have, as they say in Washington, true facts that you can use to be able to make your decisions going forward. I hope everyone's uh, enjoyed this particular episode of the perspective of remote work from the US worker. If you like this episode, please go ahead like, share. We can be found on LinkedIn. We can be found on Facebook. And in addition to that, we can be found as a podcast format on your favorite podcast platform. So until next time, keep your hands washed, keep your distance. I'm Lou Quinto. And I'm Craig Anderson.